Hey, I thought you guys wanted to go to the park. We saw Mommy on TV, Daddy. Who ready for Hollywood? Let's go. Come on, it'll be fun. We'll throw rocks at birds. Come on. Hey, Jenny. Dad. Ah, wonderful playing today, kiddo. Ah, thank you. As per usual. Oh, you think so? <laughs> well, Matt slept in again. He took the kids to the park, Mom. Ah, uh, Matt. Uh, Dick, I have to. How are the children going to know God if they never come to church? I know, but I can't make Matt come, Mom. No, but you could bring them to church. Take away the TV cameras, Matt will be back. <laughs> Look. Don't Alice and Carol and her daughters are beautiful today. If you lived in Harrison Cove, you could afford to look like that, too. <laughs> you too, kid. We have a golf weather. Hey, you sound a little concerned there, Seven. <laughs> what is it, Dad? It's just, it's just gas. This happens all the time lately. Have you seen your doctor? <sighs> that quack. He can just give me some over-the-counter stuff and collect his cold pay. Tony D'Amico called last night. He's moving to Cincinnati. Cincinnati? What for? Show some hustle, Ryan! Yeah, he says it's a promotion. Oh, man. Hope so. So we're out of coach. You know anybody who would like to sell his soul to you, soccer? I might. Yeah, I got an idea. Why don't we all meet up at the cabin next weekend? Get together. Sorry, I can't got stuff to do at school. Uh, and I have tests to study for. Oh, well, well, give us okay. a call and let us know if you can get it every weekend. We will. Bye, Bye. 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 I love you. Bye. 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 We will. Bye. You know, it's still early. You want to try the new Italian place in town? Not tonight. I'm a little tired. Just like that. Without discussing it with me. I didn't think you'd mind. Coaching soccer is going to take all your free time. And it's not even Ryan's team. I know, but they were in a bind. They needed somebody. They asked me. I said yes. What about our concert series? By the time you're done with soccer, it'll be too late for you to go. So you can still take Nora. She enjoys it. You'll have more fun. Oh, Matt. There was something for us to do together. It's not... Matt, I'm serious. I'm sorry. I already said yes. Thanks for the demo, Matt. Well, Cliff, you can check out the competitors. You're not going to find any network systems faster or more user-friendly than ours. And you have a special to the end of the month. Did I say that? I'll call you at the office at the end of the week. Thanks, Cliff.
Jenkins. I'm lame. I'm referring soccer to this. I mean, come on. Look, this is so much fun. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The truth is, Mattis doesn't want to do anything that I want to do anymore. Oh, come on. That is not true. It is. No, he's always there for you. Well, we used to do things together all the time, but now I can't even remember when the last time we went out was. You know, just the two of us. Randy and I aren't any different. Doesn't that bother you? Oh, no, not really. Oh. <laughs> Don't you think that for marriage is to work? You know, the couples have to make time for each other. Well, yeah, I guess, but you know how it is. I mean, there's work and the kids and a million things to think about and worry over. I mean, sometimes it's just... What? Do you know those people? Yeah. They go to my church. Excuse me for just a minute. Oh, Jenny. Hi. Hi. Stephen, you remember Jenny Moran? She's the organist at True Transcendent. Yes, of course. Hello. And do you know the pattern? Yes. Hi. Hello, Jenny. Hi. Oh, I guess that means we better get back in. Okay. Enjoy. I'll see you Sunday. Bye now. Are you enjoying the concert? Oh, yes. I love Mordine. His music is just so heartfelt. Yes, it is. Well, enjoy the rest of the program. Dr. Carroll, yeah. I'm sorry to bother you, but I, I want to ask your advice about something. My dad is really sick. His, he's been having terrible stomach pains, but he refuses to go to his doctor. HMO? Exactly. Well, why don't you have him come see me? Oh, no, no, I wasn't even... I didn't mean that. I just was hoping that you could offer me some uh, recommendation. Well, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? No, it's not bad. It's... Well, then have him come see me, please. Okay? Okay, I think I will. Thank you. Okay. And McFarlane is all finished with his warm ups. That'll bring up the short Come on, do something. Do something. Hi. Hey, how's your concert? Oh, it was incredible. They oh. played this piece by Brodine. It was so beautiful and so romantic. And oh, I didn't even swing at that. It was perfect. And I really wish that you could have been there. Right down the middle. Nobody consulted me about seeing any doctor. Dad, he made room in his busy schedule to see you. We can't just cancel. I'm not going. You have to see someone, Dick. I'm fine. No, you're not. You're sick, and I'm worried sick about you. I want you to see Dr. Carroll. Please. I wonder how much office is rent for in this neighborhood. It's a free consultation, Dad. Jenny Bell. You haven't called me that in years. I haven't told you how much I love you lately, either. Hello, Jenny. Hi. Mr. Patterson? I'm Stephen. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, if you're anything like me, you hate going to the doctor. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to run a few tests, draw some blood, and then I'm going to send you home. So if you'll just follow me. I'm going to go with you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, we've been going to the same church together. He has to introduce himself. Someone, Dr. Carroll. What's happening? Georgia? Yes, doctor? Oxygen. Right away. Hey, Ma. Hello, sweetheart. What happened, Pat? Sorry, I had to cut your cruise short, Pop. What the hell happened? Well, he's been sick a long time. He probably should have been to a doctor a year ago, and I guess when he went in for the checkup, his system just collapsed. What is it? What's wrong with it? It's pancreatic cancer. Oh. Can they operate? It's too late. Way too late. Oh,
How is he? He's resting. Zonked out of his mind, to be more exact. Thank you very much. In cases like these, relieving the pain is about the best we can do. In cases like these, you live your whole life, and at the end of it, that's all you are. A case. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I know. Listen, I've just finished my rounds. I'm going to get some coffee. Why don't you come join me? My treat. Oh, no, no, no. He's going to be fine. And you look like you could use a rest. Come on. Doctor's orders. <sighs> OK. Thanks. Better hold that thanks to you've tried our coffee. You may want to take it back. <laughs> That's a tough old bird on the outside, but underneath, he's pure marshmallow. You should see him with his grandchildren. He's like a five-year-old. How many kids do you have? Three, two boys and a girl. Have I ever seen them at church? Probably not. Matt, that's my husband. He's not really a big fan of true transcendence. I wish he'd come more, but what can I say? We're different. We don't see eye to eye on things. Well, not many people do. You and Allison see eye to eye on things. You seem like the perfect couple. Hardly. <sighs> what? Nothing. No, what? No, it's just... How long have we been going to the same church? And we've never even had a conversation like this. In fact, We've never even had any conversation. Shame on us. In fact, until I walked up to you at that concert, I would have never even dreamed of speaking to you. Why not? Well, it's just, there's the Harrison Cove side of the church, and there's the Oldham side of the church, and never the twain shall meet. Never the twain shall meet? Is that what people really think? I do. Or did. What made you change your mind? A bad cup of coffee. He looks so peaceful. Hey, Jan. Bless. You be strong, hon. Uh, okay. <laughs> May. Sweetheart, you didn't have to come. Hey, kiddo, we wanted to. The minute we heard. Okay. Oh, this is Dr. Caro. Hi. Hi, Doc. The last of the Moran. Nice to meet you. We appreciate everything you're doing. Oh, well, I've got the easy part, just to make him feel as comfortable as possible. If you need anything, please feel free to call. Thank you. Nice to meet you. How's Amanda? Oh, she's... She's holding up. We're sitting with her in shifts. She'll be here tonight. <laughs> the dashing Dr. Caro. Just trying to look my best for you, sweetheart. Oh, thank you, Stephen. What is it? Dick Patterson.
to quit. It's the only job I've ever had. But I might need to find something more for the time. You know, with the hospital bills and the funeral expenses, Mom just can't afford it all. We can handle it, Jen. It's not a problem. Why don't I talk to the hospital? Absolutely not. You've already done too much. I'm still not comfortable with you not billing us for this. No, I think nothing of that. Well, thanks anyway, but we'll take care of it. This is just something that families do. Well, I know that you can take care of it. I just... I think it would be a great loss for the church if you left. Well, all right, in here. <clears throat> Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's a flight jacket. Well, it's 40 years ago. I just... <clears throat> now we're packing up his things and getting on with our lives. And we will, Mom. It just takes time. Taking care of you and Daddy was all I ever wanted. Mom, was it enough? He was the best friend I ever had. Your best friend? Mr. Patmore, hi. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was on my way to a meeting. And here, I wanted to give this to you personally. What is it? Open it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, well, you can believe it. But how? Why? Well, I had the opportunity to go over the church payroll the other day, and it seemed to me that we were paying you way too little. As chairman of the board of trustees, I thought we should do something about it. That's a game of about three yards, bringing up second and seven. Got a little daylight there in the middle, but then suddenly surrounded by red jerseys. Well, he's going to find that daylight to close it up Hey, guys. Hey, Jen. Hello. Hello there. Hello. It's very strong. You are looking at a lady who just got a huge raise. Way to go, Mom. Thanks. Really? Mm -hmm. Jenny, that's great. Thanks, Randy. It's not going to put us on easy street, of course. But da -da -da -da, we'll be able to crawl out from under some of our dead anyway. And guess who's having a glass of wine to celebrate? <laughs> What you had to do that for? Do what? Come in there and embarrass me like that? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm sorry I don't make the kind of money to support you in the lifestyle to which you become accustomed. God, stop it. But I do the best that I can. I appreciate you rubbing my nose in it in front of everybody that my wife's got to work to keep us afloat. Oh, Matt, come on. Every couple we know, they both work. Yeah, well, it's nothing to be proud of. Well, I am proud of it. Good for you. Just don't go blabbing in front of everybody that we've got money problems. Hey, no fair. Cheering you up shouldn't depress me. You look gorgeous. <laughs> I haven't worn anything this... Fancy since high school. Well, you go. Oh, high school. Do you remember how we were gonna take the whole summer off, senior year, travel to Europe, see the world? Oh, yeah, the grand tour. Paris, Rome, Venice. Ooh, where those hunky gondoliers would sweep us off our feet. <laughs> <laughs> and we would dance. Oh, yes. Barefoot, Barefoot. under the stars. Oh, how could I forget? I wish we'd done it. Hey, who says we won't? We won't. Jen. We won't. Look, 
I know what you're going through. You just lost your dad and you're suddenly feeling mortal. It's only natural. I'm barely 40, Nora. And I feel like my life is already over. Get serious. I am serious. I mean, I've been married forever and... Well, look at Mom, you know? I mean, where did her life go? And now she's just, she's, she's so lost and, and afraid and I want more. Jen, your mom's had a great life. Has she? Well, yeah. What is it, Jenny? Why are you talking like this? I don't know. You're probably right. I'm just, dad's gone and I feel mortal. Yeah. I'm gonna buy this dress. You do that. Jenny. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Where's your husband? He's not a big fan of Brahms. No, well, Allison's not either. It's too bad, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Tell her I said hello. Well, she's she's not here either. Oh. Well, enjoy. I'll see you at an admission. Yes. Uh, Jenny, uh, listen, I, uh, uh, I have an extra seat. Why don't you come and sit with me? I'd love to. Great. You should know. <laughs> I'm competent at best. I'd never be able to do that. Well, you could have fooled me. Stephen, did you know that I got a raise? No. That's wonderful. Congratulations. You didn't have anything to do with it? Nope. I might have said something there on purpose. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Well, I meant what I said. It'd be a great loss for the church if you left us. And for me, too, Jenny. Well, thank you. And thanks for tonight. It was special. Yes, it was. Good night. Good night. Drive safe. Thank you. Star hey. Adventure. Hey. Hey. Ryan, what's that? Just something from your favorite chocolate store. Oh. Thanks. Isn't that the kind that you like? No, it is. Yes. I love them. <laughs> I haven't eaten candy since I went back on that diet. Oh, right. Jenny, I'm sorry I was such a jerk about your race. Thanks. And I'm sorry if I embarrass you in front of Randy. I didn't mean to. It's just, I was so excited about it, excuse me. I know. 
I know. Maybe you wouldn't be so sensitive about me working if you started going back to church again. I am not going to true transcendence. Why not? Because those people are all a bunch of stuck-up phonies. Oh, does that make me a stuck-up phony, too? No, you're not one of them. You just work there. No, Matt. I worship there. And those stuck-up phonies are my friends. You know, next weekend is no excuses Sunday. I really want you and the kids to go. We got the soccer uh, picnic on Sunday. We'll be back way before that. It's only two hours. Oh, come on. Come on, Matt. Two teensy, weensy little hours. Can't you do that for me? OK. OK. Could you hang up your coat, please? A marriage is like a triangle. At the lower two points, we have the husband and we have the wife. And at the top point, we have God. Sadly, there are many marriages where only one partner develops their relationship with Christ. Goals, perspectives, and values become different. Marriage is a solemn vow made before God to each other. Don't fail your partner by refusing to follow Christ. You need God's help. Excuse us. Good Amanda, morning. Good morning. How are you? Boys? Hi. Hi. Hey, Matt. It's nice to see you. It's been a long time. Reverend? Wonderful sermon. Much food for thought. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Amanda. I put a lot of work and prayer into it. What did you think of it, Matt? Well, you know. Food for thought? You want to know what I think? I've always valued your candor, Matt. I think instead of talking about marriage, maybe you should have talked about money a little bit. Since that seems to be the God that you worship around here, I mean, that's what I see. I see money, I see TV cameras. That's what I think. Come on, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Good morning. Go, 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 go through, go through! Go through, go through! Shoot! Shoot! Come on! <laughs> Look at those two. They're the biggest kids out there. Okay, let's see. Hey, you all right? Jenny? Okay. I'm fine. I'm just tired. Yeah, I hear you. Weekends are supposed to be about relaxing. Ha! Huh. Time Sunday night rolls around, I feel like I've just worked double overtime. Well, what with the cleaning, the cooking, you know, the thrill of the big time sports. Yeah, what I wouldn't give for one long, lazy afternoon with nothing to do but kick back and chill out. Still, look at all we have. We are lucky, you know. We are lucky. Jenny? Nora? Oh, hey. Great. Thanks. Morning. Morning. Where are the kids? They're at mom's. She's taking them to school. I'm going to mom's too, Matt. I'm leaving. Leaving? I'm sorry. I really am. But I've I've been thinking about it for a long time and I've made up my mind. I'm going. What are you talking about? Matt, you don't respect me, who I am, what I do, what I believe in, and I, 
I can't live like that anymore. This is ridiculous. You never said anything about being unhappy, not like I this. I have not. I've been saying it over and over and over and over Look, and over. You're not just over, gonna walk over, out of here. I just haven't been listening. Now just move and let me go. Fine. You wanna go? You wanna go? He threw your clothes out of the window. He went crazy, Mom. That doesn't sound like Matt. It's Dad! Yahoo! Daddy! Dad! Dad! Daddy! Hey, buddy. What's going on, Dad? I want to come home. You will. we got to work this out. <laughs> Jenny, we have to talk. There's nothing to talk about. I think there is. Let's not stand out here. Come inside and talk. Cooper, come on. You kids can go out back and play. All right, Jenny, you want to tell me what's going on? I've already told you, Matt. I don't have anything more to say. Well, you're going to have to do better than that. OK. I want out. What kind of thing is that to say? What's that supposed to mean? See, you don't even hear me. You don't understand. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, you're not. You're just talking. Uh oh. Why don't the two of you see someone? A Reverend Masters does a marriage counseling. Masters? No way. Well, there's a Reverend Bell at Olin Methodist. Uh, he's a good man. What do you say, Jenny? OK, fine. I'll go and call. Baby, what is going on? Is there somebody else? You would say that. Well, what do you want me to say? I mean, yesterday we're happy, and today? No, Matt. Yesterday you were happy. You don't even see me. So there's nobody else? No, Matt. This isn't about someone else. This is about you and me. Gosh. You don't even listen. Fine. Well, how much can we spend on the office party and the church Christmas party? I don't know. It depends if you're willing to scale back. I mean, we just cannot continue to justify these huge blowout parties. They're enormous expenditures, and we can't write them off. Honey, the office party is not a blowout expenditure. It's money well spent on people who work hard all year, and we're going to have one this year. All right, but you have already committed 3000 to the church party. All right, well, just tell me how much I can... You know what? I was talking to Joe Masters this morning. He told me that Jenny Moran left her husband. Moved in with her mother. You're kidding. All right, how much can I spend on the office party? Bottom line, and I'll stick to that.
scared. Yes. We can't talk here. No. So do you know Brown High School? No. Can you go tell me about it? Yeah. <laughs> Brown High School is where I went to um, high school with Mal. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sounds ridiculous. He was the piano mover. <laughs> <laughs> I was the piano player. I, I... I don't know. Something just happened after a few years. We became more and more distant. We stopped talking about the things we both cared about. We started to care about different things. And um, of course, we were in love, and it was wonderful. And, and then things just died. And I can't believe I'm crying in front of you. I'm sorry. Okay. Does it bother you that I'm talking about this to you? Oh, no, no. Well, my kids are everything to me. The two kids are great. And uh, I think we thought in the beginning to stay together was helpful to them, but I think they've known all along that it hasn't been a particular good marriage and it's gotten worse he won't share these things that are important to me mm -hmm. i can't talk to my mom about it you know but i don't want her life that's what i'm trying to say is i i was going to be such a different person it just hit me i just can't stay and never know what i could be or what i could do it's like it's just you know that day that we were at the concert together that was the first time in in years that i've actually sat down and enjoyed doing something that was so close to my heart with someone else you know i have a a, a secret life how so every thursday afternoon i cut off patients from four o'clock on and i go over there to the museum oh gosh i'd love to take the kids there and Show them different art exhibits and... You know, there's gonna be an exhibit tomorrow. No. Why don't you come? Meet me there. Just as I friends. I don't think that'd be such a good idea. No strings attached, just as friends. Just meet me there. Four o'clock, come. All right, okay. Yeah. No, you don't have to see anything. I mean, it's right. No, no, you're right. It's, it's, it was... <laughs> it's not a good idea. I'm sorry, I didn't mean... I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you. It's a tough time, I'm sorry. I'm gonna talk to you for a minute. Okay, sure. So I'll be right back. Yeah? Jenny, what the hell's going on? You might said you moved out. I had to, Nora. I, I couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't take what? I mean, are you guys fighting or something? Or No, it's nothing like that. It's... Oh, it's so much more complicated. I've been trying to tell you... You know how sometimes you, you just get to a point where... where you just have to move forward with your life. Jenny, you've invested 15 years in this marriage. Yeah. Don't just throw it away. Excuse me. Ryan! Ryan! Wait! What are you doing? He's coming home with me. You can't just take him like that, Matt. I'm not taking him. He called and asked to come home. I don't want to stay at Granny's, Mama. I want to be with Dad. Wait. Ryan, wait a minute. Listen, I know that this is a really confusing and, and difficult situation. I know that. I know that you're angry. You don't have to pick between your dad and me. We both still love you very much. We're going to work something out where you spend time with both of us. I'm glad you're thinking about the kids. Of course I'm thinking about the kids. Well, until we work something out, he has the right to live where he likes. Don't start making them choose between us, Matt. It's not fair. It's not fair to Ryan. You're going to tell me what's fair.
know what you're thinking about? What? Your husband. Husband? Oh, that good-looking guy who was with you yesterday. Oh. I was watching you two. My husband's passed on, but he used to look at me like that. Like what? Like I was the most wonderful woman in the world. Mm. You're a lucky girl. incredible how he transitions from complete calm to total chaos. I feel real kinship on that. I know, me too. Now your life can just go along normally for a period of time, and then one event changes it completely. I know. <laughs> you know, as a doctor, I was trained to look at life dispassionately, to rely on reason and not feeling, but I don't. I believe in God, which a lot of people think is irrational. And I believe that God is meant for us to be with one person in life and that our journey is to find that person. Do you believe that? Yes. When I married Allison, I thought that she was that person, but I was wrong, and for a long time, I've been very much alone. I didn't know. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You knew at the moment that we met. No, no, it's not right. But it's true. God is truth. <sighs> Are you sure it's safe to come here? Yep. Allison never comes here during the week. In fact, I think secretly she's always hated the place. I hate sneaking around, Stephen. I know, I do too. But as soon as our divorces are final, we won't have to anymore. Are you sure this is what you want? Are you kidding? Of course I'm sure. I've never been so sure of anything in my entire life. so guilty about Allison. Please try not to, okay? My marriage has been over for years. There is nothing to feel guilty about, okay? Okay. I'm seeing a lawyer this week. You are? Yeah. Does this need more salt? Yes, it does. <laughs> What's your strategy going to be? Strategy? Yeah. Grounds for divorce. Oh. Irreconcilable differences, I guess. Isn't that what people usually do? Yeah, but that's not always your best option. I mean, you want to get back your fair share of what you put into the marriage. I mean, even if you fight for everything, you're probably just still going to come out even. But I'm the one who wants the divorce. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Even though you initiated this thing, it, it doesn't mean that the divorce is your fault. After all, you did put up with years of abuse. Matt never abused me. Well, from what you've been telling me, it seems that he did. 
No, he never hit me. Well, abuse isn't just about hitting. It's about controlling someone. It's, it's, it's about smothering them. Oh. Well, he did that. In a lot of marriages, as long as the woman plays the obedient wife, everything is fine. But then, as soon as she crosses her husband... Uh -oh. Sorry, Mom. Did I wake you? Oh, something did. Ever since your father died, I haven't been sleeping well. I'm thinking of, uh, getting a smaller bed. All that abuse and everything, it's really true. Yes. All these years, I never saw a thing. I'd... It was subtle, Mom. It was psychological. Well, it's over now. Where the deer and the antelope lay, where seldom is heard a discouraged You are in a good mood. <laughs> well, beautiful day, beautiful singing companion, beautiful dinner. Who wouldn't be in a good mood? You catch in? I caught everything. Yeah, go ahead, rub it in. Oh. oh, Missy, I was um cleaning up inside and I found this. Is it yours? I think that's Kim's. Doesn't your sister have a pair like that? Yeah, I think so. Mystery solved. I'm going to get these on ice. These are so beautiful. Where did you find that? I've been looking everywhere. Oh, I didn't find it. Allison did, at the cabin. Oh, no. That's all right. She doesn't suspect anything, but we're going to have to be more careful. I wish we could just tell them. I know, I know, I do too, but we can't do anything to jeopardize your divorce proceedings. Okay? Okay. Okay. I met with a lawyer. How did it go? Oh, it's... Okay. He wanted me to give him examples of Matt's abuse. I couldn't think of very many. When's he going to serve in the papers? Mm, next week sometime. Why don't you have him serve them on Sunday? Why? Well, how do you think Matt's going to respond when he gets them? Not very good. You mean trick him? <laughs> Jenny, you can't trick someone into doing something he wouldn't otherwise do. I mean, Matt's responsible for his own actions. If he's going to make a scene about the complaint, then that's his responsibility. But if he is going to make a scene, why not have witnesses? It can only help your case. Can I help you? You Matthew James Moran? Yeah. Have a nice day. Spousal abuse? Matt, this is not the time or the place. Why not? These are your friends. They believe you. <laughs> Matt, say it, Brad. Do you believe her? She says she's scared of me. Yeah. Right here. During the marriage, lived in a state of fear for her personal safety. You believe it? Matt, come on, please. Let's take it outside. What did I please. ever do to you to deserve this? Outside. What? Kids are to find out about this. Did you think about Matt, that? Did you stop right, it? Friend, it's enough. I'm, I'm just going to go back and get my music. I'll be right back. It's no wonder she left him. He has a time bomb waiting to explode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Jenny, are you okay? Well, I guess you were right about Matt. I'm sorry, but at least now you know. I have my witnesses anyway. Listen, I know this is difficult, but we're gonna get through this. Please, let's not talk about it here. We'll be together soon. Do you think so? Yes. Ted! What's going on? Had a break-in last night while we were out to dinner. You're kidding. Lucky for whoever it was we weren't here. I would have shot the son of a bitch. You've got a gun? You want to believe it. We're none of us safe anymore, Stephen. None of us. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, my client will agree to no such thing. It's a simple division of property. When your client initiated this divorce, she relinquished her right to equitable division. A reasonable settlement now will obviate the need for a trial and the inevitable errand of certain facts about your client. Not facts. Allegations. And specious ones at that. So your client's willing to uh, defend against a claim of spousal abuse? Is yours willing to defend against the claim of parental neglect? Parental neglect. That's ludicrous. Well, so is spousal abuse. You got any marks? You got any proof? That's pretty good. Now, this time, I want you to slip your right hand down under the butt. Pull back with the right. Gently push forward with the left, OK? Try it. Better. That's excellent. You're getting the hang of it. I just don't like these things. Ah. It's your constitutional right to protect yourself, Stephen. And it's your duty to protect your family. Yeah, and I bump into a bad guy in my living room, and he's got a gun, too. Who do you think's gonna be better at this, him or me? You, if you practice. I just don't know if I want a gun in my house, Ted. Well, odds are you're never gonna need it. But believe me, you'll feel better knowing you have it. Well, what can I say about this man that you don't already know? As church deacon, he helps oversee the spiritual well-being of our members. As chairman of the 21st Century Fund, he has raised more money for the church's future than any other congregate. But most importantly, he's a role model. A man whose life is a testimony to the power of Christian love. A yardstick against which we can compare our own commitment to Christ. A man who has only one fault that I'm aware of. He never lets me win a golf. <laughs> As chairman of the Board of Trustees, it is with tremendous pleasure that I present this year's Man of the Year Award, the first unanimous vote in board history to the finest man I know, my friend, Dr. Stephen Carroll. first told me I was to receive this award, I was very excited. I was delighted. But then he said, don't get excited too quickly, as he had to confirm it with the board of directors. Because as he put it, there must be some mistake. <laughs> so I got the hint, and uh, I let him win at golf a few times, and here we are. <laughs> this is an extraordinary honor, and I'm deeply grateful for it. But the truth of the matter is that the work I do for this church isn't really worthy of acknowledgement because I do it for very selfish reasons. Being a part of this community has been the greatest joy of my life. The deep and abiding friendships that I have with so many of you, 
and most of all, my personal relationship with God. And all the work that I do here for the church only adds to my sense of belonging to something much, much greater than myself. And for that, I am deeply grateful. So thank you, and thank God for this extraordinary honor. Thank you very much. I think I'm a fool, Stephen. What? Well, you must to be doing this again. Doing what again, Allison? Of course, why wouldn't you? I mean, only a fool would have believed you when you said it would never happen again. What are you talking about? Jenny Moran. I don't want to ruin the girls' holidays, but after Christmas, I'm going to be talking to a divorce lawyer. I wouldn't do that. You'd ruin your reputation. <laughs> My reputation? Not mine. Yours, maybe. I'm gonna take you for everything you've built up all these years. Oh, yeah, just imagine what all of your friends and admirers are gonna think when they discover who you really are. Who I really am is your husband. Ruin me and you'll ruin yourself. Think about it. Ellie Cooper, your dad's here. Right. Daddy! Hey, buddy. Oh. Have fun, have fun. Hi, Dad. Your chariot awaits. Cooper? Cooper, your scarf? Hmm? You don't want to catch a cold, do you? Come on, yes, baby. yes, come on. There you go. You have them back by 5 o'clock sharp, and if I see a mark on them, I'm calling the police. I think we should tell them. People are going to find out sooner or later anyway. It's better to be out in the open than to have them all whispering behind our backs. People aren't going to find out. Not if we're careful. <sighs> Allison's already found out. She won't say anything. She won't. She cares too much about what people think. Stephen. Hmm. Is this real? Do you love me enough to divorce Allison? Of course I do. What are you talking about? Jenny, I've been going crazy about this. I keep thinking... Maybe something will happen to Allison. Maybe... God willing, she'll get in an accident, or God willing, her car will hit an embankment, or God willing, her parachute will open. Don't talk like that. Listen, I love you. All I want is for us to be together. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have given us. Thank you for watching over us and listening to our prayers, for giving us good health. Thank you for friends, for family. family. For bringing us together today so we can have this wonderful meal, for reminding us of our blessings for all you have given us. For your bountiful, bountiful generosity, generosity and, and infinite concern, a love which we have not earned, but receive only through your love and your grace. We thank you, O Lord, for these and all thine other gifts today and every day. Amen. Amen. Now, can we please eat? <laughs> very, very, very hungry. Okay. Uh, who's going to have white meat? Who's going to have dark meat? Wait, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cliff. Hi, Matt. How was your Thanksgiving? Fine, fine, thanks. Two, please. One adult, one uh, kid. It's a good movie. You're going to enjoy it. Yeah, but it's really scary. I'll say I'm going to be out your way on Friday. I'll bring by those network upgrades we talked about. Not necessary. Come on, Ash. 
Come on, kids. <gasps> You're going to Chicago? Do you want me to fly there and meet you? No. Medical conventions are incredibly hectic. I don't care. We'd never see each other. You'd be bored. I don't know if I can go four whole days without seeing you. Well, we'll just have to make up for lost time when I get back on mm. there. You oh. promise? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think I don't want to spend one more minute away from you than I have to. Now, listen. Listen to me. After Christmas, things are going to be very different. Speaking of Christmas, I've got you a little something. What's this? It's present. I knew you couldn't open it under the tree, so... Oh. Let's go ahead, open it. Oh, Jenny, thank you. It's beautiful. It's from the museum. In honor of our first kiss. Thank you. I knew there was somebody else. Could have been completely innocent. Is that what it looked like to you? No. I'll find out for myself. I'll get Caro's address. I'll go to his house. I'll confront him face to face. I'll ask him, you sleeping with my wife? He says yes, I'll bust him up. Take it easy, Matt. She lied to me, Randy. You're probably right. So tomorrow, when, when you're not so worked up, go and talk to Jenny. Don't go anywhere near Carol. You just get yourself locked up. Okay? Hey, guys. Hello, Doc. Hello. Great speech today, Stephen. How would you know? You slept for most of it. <laughs> Oh, Stephen, I'm going to grab a drink before dinner. Why don't you join me? You can fill me in on what I missed. Won't you fall asleep again? I don't think so. Nah, I'm beat. I'm just going to stretch out and grab some room service. Let's do something tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Your boy CD, makeup. Over my dead body. Clothes, earrings, glow bracelets. What? Glow bracelets? What are those? Well, 
You know, those things you wear on your arm that little kids like? Not just little kids, all kids. Yeah, sure. And what do you want for Christmas? Nothing. Oh, come on, Cooper. You must want something. I want us to be with Daddy again. Georgia, hi, it's Steven. Dr. Carroll, hi. I'm glad you called. Listen, put Allison on, will you? That's just it. She's not here. She hasn't arrived yet. She didn't open the office this morning? No, I had to do it. I called your house, and there's no one there. I'm worried. Well, I wouldn't be. We probably just got our signals crossed. Well, last night when she left, she said that she'd be in in the morning. She did. All right, look, I'm going to call one of the neighbors and have them go over to the house and check things out. Meanwhile, I'll leave my cell phone on. Call if you hear anything, all right? OK. And uh, Georgia, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. So long. Yeah, Ted, hi. Steven. You're the gentleman who called? Yes, sir, I am. I uh, checked the garage, and Mrs. Carrow's car is still in there. Uh, the front door is locked, but the side door is wide open. What's your name, sir? Uh, Quiller. I'm the neighbor. Mrs. Carroll? Homicide, Detective Rafferty. Virgilio, come on, you can eat that on the way. On the way where? No forcible entry. The door was unlocked. Any other doors and windows unlocked? No. You ever buy a diamond, Virgilio? Oh, please, who's got money for diamonds? I bought my wife some diamond earrings last Christmas. Saved all year for them. This thing must cost five times that much. Yeah, please. So, what do you think? Was she strangled and then shot? Or vice versa? Maybe she wasn't strangled at all. Maybe it was a fashion statement. Oh, a nightgown and a necktie. Yeah, nice tie. Footballs? <laughs> Rafferty. Yeah, okay, we'll be right down. 
Your husband's here. Uh, Dr. Back. Carroll, can we, uh, can we ask a few questions, sir? Excuse me. Uh, Excuse me. Dr. Carroll, who would do this? What exactly happened here? Can you give us a comment, sir? Dr. Carroll, Dr. Carroll, who would do this to your wife, sir? Dr. Carroll? Dr. Carroll, I'm Detective Rafferty. This is Detective Virgilio. Sir. What happened? Who could have done this? This is... I'm sorry, we, we don't know yet. Why don't we have a seat? Well, look, maybe maybe there's some mistake. Maybe maybe it wasn't hers. I'm possible? afraid your daughter, Missy, identified the body. Missy's here? She's next door with her sister. They were contacted at school, sir. Well, I have to go see yes, them. I, I have to talk. I'm afraid we have to ask you a few questions first. All right. Just please sit down, sir. Uh, can you tell us the last time you spoke to your wife, sir? Uh... Yesterday afternoon, I, I called her from the medical conference I was attending in Chicago. How was she at that time? She was fine. She was at the office. She was busy. Dr. Carroll, do you know anyone who would want to hurt your wife? No. No, everyone loved Alice, and she was wonderful. No. It appears your wife was murdered sometime around midnight last night. Can you tell us where you were at that time? Yes, I was at the conference. Well, actually... I was at the hotel by then. The conference adjourned at about 5.30, and uh, I went back to my room. Instead of joining my colleagues for dinner, I was very tired. Can anyone verify that? Yes, of course, the hotel can. I was there all night. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, is this tie yours? No. Have you ever seen it before? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. A community shocked by the murder of Dr. Stephen Carroll's wife, Allison. For an update, we go live Mom? with Cindy Lewis at yes? the scene. Dr. Stephen Carroll, the bereaved husband, arrived late this afternoon from a medical conference out of state. Police have been Allison questioning Carroll the prominent gastroenterologist for the past hour since his arrival. Very little is known at this time about the circumstances surrounding the murder. That. However, reliable sources do say a burglary might have been involved, but that is just pure speculation at this point in the investigation. Matthew Moran. Not more legal papers. I need to ask you some questions. The nature of our relationship? I hardly know the woman. Are you aware that Mrs. Carroll was murdered last night? What? We understand that you and your wife were separated, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Where were you last night? At home. Tell me. Most of it. Most of it. I went out for a drive after dinner. Where to? Nowhere in particular. You just went out driving? Look, my wife and I are more than just separated. She's filed for divorce. Things have gotten very ugly. Sometimes I just go out and drive around to clear my head. What time did you get home from this, um, driving around? 11 o'clock. Anyone verify that? No. My son lives with me, but he was asleep when I got in. Have you ever seen this before, Mr. Moran? Where did you get that? You ever seen it before? I need to call my lawyer. I've conferred with the detectives handling this case, and I have every confidence that they will track down whoever committed this terrible crime. Please direct all of your questions to the police. In the meantime, I ask that you respect 
asking you all to respect the privacy of my daughters and myself. How do we deal with our loss? Thank you. Dr. Carroll, do you have any idea who might have done this to your wife? Stephen Carroll and his daughters Kim and Missy. We can only imagine their state of mind this morning as they arrived here at True Transcendence Community Church, which they attend, to prepare for the condolences and prayers of the many friends of Alison Carroll and to wait for news, any news, that will shed light on this truly senseless murder. remember as her singing God gave her a beautiful voice everything about Allison was beautiful she was one of the finest women I've ever known and she loved God we don't know why God allows these things to happen but he loved Allison and we need to trust him now Yeah, that's my tie. Correction, it's similar to a tie you alleged, Neil. All right, all right, fine. The similar tie that you allegedly own, Mr. Moran. Where is that tie? It turned up missing a couple weeks ago. It turned up missing. I never wear a tie. I, I sell business computer systems, mostly over the phone. So when I have to meet a client, I pull on a tie. I keep it in the back seat of the car. And? The movies. Excuse me. I took my kids to the movies a while ago. I came out in the back window of the car. It was broken in. Why would anybody take a tie? Allison always loved Amazing Grace. I definitely think you should play that at the funeral. And anything else you think is appropriate. Would you excuse me, Jenny? Of course, Reverend. Amanda. Such a tragedy. Thank you so much for coming. I need your voice. Stephen? Oh, I'm so sorry about Allison. When can I see you? I don't know. I don't know. I'll call you as soon as I can. How are you doing, Jenny? I'm fine, Mr. Petmore. Thank you. I just want you to know if the rumors turn out to be true. No one holds you responsible. Not even remotely. What rumors? Oh, your husband. Matt? Well, what about Matt? Oh, you don't know. He's the prime suspect in Allison's murder. 
I am, I'm, I'm so very sorry. Either that guy is a world-class liar, or he's telling the truth. Yeah, what do you think? I think I'd feel a lot better about Matt Moran if he could account for where he went on his drive the other night. You went to Carol's house? I had a couple beers. I I wanted to confront him. I went to the house. I rang the bell. His wife came to the door. Said he wasn't home. You talked to her? About two hours before she was killed. Well, why didn't you tell the police? I didn't want anybody to know about the affair, if there was one. You're worried about the affair? You should be worried about being the last person to see Alice and Carol alive. Hey, Ed. Dr. Carol's story checks out. Flew round trip on Meridian, parked his car lot one near the terminal. Get a copy of the ticket? Yes. And Meridian verified his flight. Not the airline ticket, the parking ticket. Well, no, I mean, Dr. Carol showed me his receipt. I got a copy of that, but the airport, they keep the tickets? Yep. Looks like I'm going back to the airport. It's OK, I'll go. Ed? Nick, you can come with me. Hello, Kim. Oh, he hello, Miss Moran. I'm sure you haven't had much time to cook, so I m m made you a casserole. Oh, thank you. Uh, come on in. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Well, it looks like I wasn't the only one cooking today. People have been very kind. How's everyone holding up? Fine, thank you. And your father? Well, as can be expected. Is he here? We're going through Mother's things right now. Oh. Well, I, I won't keep you. Would you just tell him I stopped by? Thank you. Jenny! Thanks for the casserole. It was very thoughtful. I'll walk you to your car. Are you out of your mind coming here like this? I need to talk to you. I'm a suspect. The police could be watching the house. I need to know what happened. It's very simple. Someone broke into my house and murdered my wife, or don't you read the papers? What is wrong with you? I want to know the truth. Then I suggest you ask your husband. Matt didn't even know Allison. The police seem to think that he did! Why are you so angry at me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, look. I'm, I, these last couple days, I'm just, I'm going crazy. I'm sorry. Well, so am I. I know, I know. Listen, it's just not a good idea for us to be seen together right now. You have to stay away, okay? Okay. Jenny? I miss you. As far as you know, Mrs. Moran, there's no relationship between your husband and Mrs. Carroll. I doubt he even knew her first name. Nick, you know Matt. He didn't even go to church. If he knew Allison at all, it was probably his Dr. Carroll's wife. Well, the problem is, Mrs. Moran, we have evidence linking your husband to Mrs. Carroll. Well, I understand that, but Matt wouldn't hurt anybody. He couldn't possibly have anything to do with this. 
I understand you and your husband are estranged. And uh, a divorce is pending. That's right. And isn't it true, Jenny, that in your divorce complaint, you accuse your husband of abusing you? So when you say Matt couldn't hurt anybody, that's not entirely true, is it? I mean, he hurt you. Well, yes, it's true, but it wasn't physical abuse. I mean, psychologically speaking, Matt could be very controlling and... In our marriage, I often felt... What's your relationship with Dr. Carroll, Mrs. Moran? Relationship? We don't have a relationship. I mean, we go to the same church, and he treated my father professionally. Friends, I guess you say, we're just friends. Friends? I just don't understand why you asked her that. I'm trying to find out why Carol's trying to implicate her husband. Well, because her husband did it. I don't think so. Look, Ed, Matt Moran has a reputation around my church. He's very hostile toward it. True transcendence. That's the one with all the TV cameras and the beamers out front, right? I'm not too crazy about it either. Do you think I killed Allison Carroll? Rafferty. Well, we'll meet you there. Please, sit down, won't you? Actually, if it's not too inconvenient, we'd like you to come down to the station and answer a few questions. Well, sure, I'll just get my coat. Afternoon, girls. Afternoon. Dad. Dad, what is it? I don't know, honey. I'll call you as soon as I find out. Thank you. Dr. Carroll, we have evidence that on the night your wife was murdered, you were a passenger on the 9 p.m. Seaboard Airlines shuttle on a return flight here. We also have evidence that when you went to the conference, you parked your car in parking lot number four. When you returned, it was in parking lot number one. Finally, we have evidence that you checked out of your hotel room at 10.15 a.m., two hours before you were notified of your wife's death, even though you were scheduled to stay at the conference for two more days. Doctor, I have a simple question for you. Did you murder your wife? Yes. Yes, I did. on the phone, will you? Missy, you cannot get on the phone. It's, it's Dad. Dad, Dad, are you okay? Oh, honey. I'm guilty. I did it. I'm, I'm not hiding anymore. Is Missy on? Hi, Daddy. Hi, honey. I'm so sorry. Oh, my little girls, I'm so sorry. Dad, Mom didn't suffer, did she? <laughs> She didn't feel a thing. There was no pain at all. <laughs> Daddy, I, I don't understand. How did this happen? I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand it either, honey. I'm, I'm going to pray to God for forgiveness, though. No, oh, Dad. Honey, honey, you have to listen to me. I need you to be strong. You're in control now. Now, I want you to write some things down for me, OK? Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have a pencil. Okay. Now, listen, I'm going to give you power of attorney. I want you to sell the cabin and use the money to pay for both of your tuitions, okay? okay? And I want you to cancel a check that I wrote for $347 to pay for my new medical license. I won't be needing it anymore. Can you do that? Okay, Dad. Okay? And, honey, they want me to hang up now, so I want you guys to be very strong and know how much I love you both. <laughs> we love you, Dad. 
about my babies. Why, Daddy? Stephen Carroll admitted murdering his wife as she slept in their Harrison Cove home, saying professional and personal pressures drove him to such despair that he had to kill his wife in order to kill himself. I don't believe it. I don't either. Confession wasn't at all coerced. He volunteered everything. So he really did this? Yes. He really did it. We have to pray for him. And for Allison. And the girls. We have to help him. In any way we can. Were you in love with him? He, he was going to divorce her and we were going to be married. Beautiful. But Matt, the things that he's saying, that he killed Allison in order to hurt himself, or that he was under professional stress, it's not true. I think he killed her to be with me. Well, that's something you should be telling to the police. I'm going to this afternoon. But I had to come tell you first. I didn't want you to hear it secondhand. Thank you. That's very thoughtful of you. How incredibly sensitive and thoughtful. Never mind what I'm going to hear. What about the kids? They've already heard their dad's a wife beater and a murderer. Now they can watch on TV and, and look in the paper and see that their mother's a whore. I'm sorry, Matt. You're sorry. You're sorry. Randy saw you and Carol together. And when he came to me and he told me, I went crazy. But then I thought, no, no, that can't be what this is about. Jenny wouldn't do that to me. After making me out to be the bad guy in this divorce for so long, she wouldn't do that to me. Matt. But you, I don't know who you are. Get out, get out of my house. Jenny doesn't live here anymore. Maybe she never did. There's nothing she can say in the divorce that's going to make any difference now. No one's going to believe her. I'm going to get the kids. I'm going to get the house. I'm going to get everything. And then I'm going to get on with my life. And what kind of life is that going to be without Jenny? She was cheating on me, Dad. You were separated. What's that supposed to mean? He's saying, what have you gained, Matt? Your house? Nothing but lumber and nails unless it's a home. Your kids. What, what if Carol tries to say their mother was involved with the murder? She had nothing to do with that. Well, Carol might say she did. But what do you care? You won. Let Jenny just twist in the wind. Well, that's where she put herself. I've known Jenny 20 years. She's like a daughter to me. You're going to make her go to the police and face all this alone? After what she did to me, why not? The way you're acting now, mister, maybe you deserve what she did to you. Yes. Family should be with her when she goes to the police. If you don't want to do it, I'll take her myself.
your problem, Matt? Yes, it is. Well, we were trying to keep our relationship secret until after our divorces. Did he ever talk to you about killing his wife? that Allison knew of our affair. He said, God willing, something will happen to her. She'll be in an accident or her car will crash. I laughed it off at the time, but now after what's happened, I feel horrible. Look, Mrs. Moran, I know this is hard on you, but I need to know the truth. The truth is, we were very much in love. And he said that after Christmas, things would be different. I'm afraid he killed her for me. That's right, you got it. Okay. Thanks very much, Mrs. Moran. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Moran. I know this has been extremely stressful. I'm just glad we have the right man behind bars. Me too. Thanks, Matt. You did the right thing. When did you find out about your daughter? Mrs. Patterson, did you know your daughter was having an affair with Dr. Carroll? Do you believe your daughter was in any way responsible for the murder? Did your daughter know that Dr. Carroll was going to murder her? Mrs. Patterson, there she is. Jenny, can you ask me? Do you have any plans for marriage? I don't believe you. Where's Elliot Cooper? Already at school. Mom. I'm so, so sorry. I was going to tell you last night when I came in, but you were already asleep. Last night? What about months ago? I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to hurt anybody, Mom. Jenny, you've been lying to me. Mom, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. her for you. Oh. Maybe God is able to forgive you for that, but... I don't know if I can. I... No, I don't. We're discussing possible plea scenarios with Mr. Alexander, Dr. Carroll's attorney, please. But you should know that this office is very reluctant to discuss any plea that won't translate into serious prison time. So there will be a trial? Probably. And I would have to testify? Yes. Well, can't you just... Read my testimony into evidence or something like that? That would be hearsay. Hearsay is inadmissible. I... I can't do it. I can't testify. I can't talk about these things in front of all those people. You won't have a choice, Mrs. Moran. Now, let me be real clear about this. Dr. Carroll is going to plead insanity. If he wins with that defense, he could be a free man in less than five years. I don't want that to happen. Because I don't think he's insane. I think he's a cold-blooded killer. I know. But won't your evidence show that? You are our evidence, Mrs. Moran. You are the prosecution's most important witness. I can't 
believe you're calling me? It's been so long since I've heard your voice. Why did you go to the police? Why, why did you tell them about us? I, I, are you serious? This is Steven. You killed her. How could you do that? Why did you do that? No, don't you understand? If, if I can convince them I was insane, I'm going to be out in a few years, and then, and then we can be together. Please, oh, please don't say that, Stephen. Don't say that you're. S you need help. You need help. Hey, I don't. I I don't need help. I don't need help. What oh. I need is for you to stop talking to the police and stop talking to the DA because that hurts my case. It hurts my case, Jenny, and, and that hurts us. Us, <laughs> Stephen. I don't even know who you are. You're sick. Please don't call me ever again. Jenny, Jenny. No, no. I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up, Stephen. Jenny, don't hang up on me. Jenny. Don't hang Jenny! with some chocolate and he needs help. Okay. Okay. How are you? I've been better. When the case goes to trial, I'm going to have to testify. I know. I read the paper. I can't be a very good mother right now. And I was wondering if... Could you watch Ellie and... Cooper for me for a while? Of course. Thanks. Mommy! Mommy! We're decorating the Christmas tree. Come help us. Come on in.
Mom, where do you think I should put this one? Oh, I don't know, sweetheart. Let's go take a look. Okay. Should we put it high or low? Um, there? Perfect. Quiet, I'm practicing. Hey, Matt. I'm gonna go now. Before we string the popcorn? I've got choir practice. Hey, um, how's your mom? I don't know. She's not talking to me. Sorry about that. We'll work it out. Bye, Bye Mom. Mom. Jenny. It's Christmas. The kids should be with their mother, so why don't you stay until after the holiday? How can you say that? How can you even think of taking me back? I didn't say anything about taking you back. I'm offering you a place to stay for the sake of the kids. after Christmas. I'm afraid this is the only solution to our problem. You wanted to see me? Yes, hi, Jenny. Please, come in. Have a seat. I have a rehearsal in just a few minutes. I'll leave you two to talk. Mm. Look, Jenny. This is a very difficult time in the church. I know. It's hard for me, too. I know that. But we've had so many shocks these last few days. We all need time to sort this out. You, more than anyone. I'm trying to, Reverend. I know that. And I want you to know that we're praying for you and your family. Thank you. But uh, the board feels and I have to say that I agree that it would be best if you weren't on staff right now. I understand. I'll take a leave of absence. Actually, it would be helpful to the church if you'd signed this. You want me to resign? It would be best for everyone. Hey. Stop by mom's. <clears throat> Got some clothes. Good. How was your practice? They fired me. What? You were baptized in that place. Aaron Patmore was behind it. Here, you go on to bed. I'll do this stuff. No, I'm going to sleep here. Matt. No, really, you take the room. You'll sleep better up there. So far, folks, getting what you want? Yes. Oh, yeah, I know I did. Yeah, like you need more trucks. Not the trucks. All I have to say to force to be a family again. And look, we are. Hey, hello. It's Jim there. Dad, look what I got. It's for you. Is it Mom? I don't know who it is. Hello? Jenny? Jenny Moran? Yes. <laughs> the liar. 
Jenny Moran, the conniving little bitch. I hope you rot in hell, you slut. You don't just. Who was it? Was it Grandma? No, sweetie, it wasn't. Who was it? It was no one. Careful, buddy, that's heavy. I can handle it. What do you want to drink, Dad? Well, it's Christmas, so I guess I'll have a beer. Dad, I knocked on Mom's door and she's not answering. I got to you just in time. That was a really stupid thing to do, you know that? I know what you're going through. I know that it... It's unbearable. But for God's sake, you gotta think about the kids. Think about what it would do to them to lose you. I just got a call from your father. How's Jenny? She's okay. She's out of danger. Oh. Well, what happened? She took a lot of pills. Well, was it an accident? No, it was not an accident. Oh, I see. They're going to keep her here until she's back on her feet, so you can come and see her any time that you want. Yes. I'll come. I'll come. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Henry. How's my favorite guard today? I got you that book you wanted. Encyclopedia on Psychiatric Disorders. That is great, Henry. Thank you very much. Yeah, right from the state facility. I had him send it over. Oh, great. Maybe this will help me understand the demon in me. Well, hey, there's no demon in you. No? And how did I let things get so out of control? Look, I'm not condoning what you did, all right? But when it comes to women, you can't blame a guy for losing his head sometimes. You know what I mean? You know what, Henry? You were wise beyond your years. Ryan won't talk to her at all anymore. And her mom. You can add me to that list. Why, what'd she ever do to you? She lied about you. I forgave her for that. How can you forgive her? Randy, when I saw her lying there in that bed, like she was dead already, I felt like I lost her forever. 
I wanted to die myself. Man, you still love her. Being as objective as I can, I think that most accurately describes my mental condition at the time of the murder. We'll have to find a psychiatrist who'll back this up. That shouldn't be a problem. But even if we do, Jenny Moran's testimony as to motive will still be our biggest legal challenge. But she's lying. Well, that's what I'll argue in court. But I still have to convince a jury. The jury will see the truth. The jury see what they want to see, Doctor. Mark, Jenny Moran will not be a credible witness. Hi. Is this the Moran house? Yeah. Are you Matt? I am. I'm Dr. Marks from the Oldham Women's Center. What can I do for you? I'm sorry for coming by so late. The hospital suggested I drop by. I, I understand your wife's been going through a difficult time. I'd like to help. We're a community-based outreach organization. Our mission is to help women in crisis. How do you do that? Through therapy. Are you seeing a therapist, Jenny? No. Well, our fee schedule is entirely needs-based. Or to put it another way, we're not in it for the money. We're just there to help. I find everything hard these days. Getting out of bed in the morning. Getting dressed, eating. I'm, I'm afraid to answer the phone. People call me and they say the most horrible things to me. My son hates me and my mother, my friends. And I hate myself. Here, take a couple of these. <laughs> What is it? Something to help you relax. Make talking easier. <laughs> Excuse me. Shouldn't my wife be finished by now? Sometimes they run a little late. Mercy, that's the psychiatric hospital, right? Yes. You can't go in there. Where's my wife? Mr. Moran, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Where is my wife? She's resting. Admitting you're the Lady of Mercy. The hell you are. I'm her doctor. No, Mercy. you're not. Jenny, where is she? Mr. Moran. Jenny? Jenny! Will you come out of there, Mr. Moran? Jenny? What did you do to her? She's sedated. Oh, what for? I'm not qualified to judge what she needs, Mr. Moran. We're leaving. Mr. Moran! Bring her back here. She's my patient. Stop her! Any man touches my wife, I'll kill him. Sir. I don't think you understand. It was like they had a prisoner in the place. I know all about that. 
So you're telling me there's nothing we can do? Look, I talked to Dr. Mark. She had a legal right to admit Jenny to Lady of Mercy. She was trying to get Jenny thrown into the nut house so that her testimony against Carol won't mean Jack. Even if you're right, we can't prove that. It's all Carol. He manipulated Jenny, and now he's manipulating people from that church. And that's why we have to do everything we can to keep the son of a bitch behind bars. Will you excuse me? This is overwhelming. People care about you, Stephen. They want you to know that. Well, please tell them how much I appreciate their prayers and that uh, if I can get the prison to give me some stationery, I'll answer every one of these. I certainly have the time. I'll talk to the warden. See that you get what you need. Thanks. You've been a good friend. Stephen, if there's anything you need, anything at all, all you have to do is ask. You know that. I know, thanks. No. Just... No. What is it? It's nothing, really. Stephen, we have known each other a very long time. Now, I know there's something you want. Just tell me what it is. No, I, I don't want to put you in an awkward position. Stephen, what is it? The members of a church are like a flock of geese flying in formation toward one goal. When a member of the flock falls out of formation, the rest of the flock doesn't keep flying. God's work is in jeopardy. They go back, find their fallen comrade, and work together to help him. Who is it? What's the matter? Who would do something like that? I don't know. Oh, there's a lot of sickos out there, let me tell you. I mean, I was at the supermarket the other day, and there was this guy there all strung out in drugs or something. I don't know. Anyway, he was standing in the frozen food section eating a TV dinner right out of the box. Frozen meat, frozen pudding, frozen, you know. Nora. Matt asked you to come by, didn't he? No. I wanted to. You haven't spoken to me in months. He called you, didn't he? Yeah. Well, it was really nice of you, but you don't owe me anything, so... Hey, maybe I was glad Matt called, okay? Maybe I was looking for a way to see you again. You could have seen me any time you wanted to. Yeah, well, you could have come by to see me. Well, maybe I haven't felt very much like going out. Oh, come on, Jen. After you moved out and everything, it did not seem like you much wanted to see me. Because you were so angry, you didn't understand anything that I was trying to do. Busting up your family, accusing Matt of abusing you? No, I sure as hell didn't understand. Oh. How could you, huh? I mean... It was pretty horrible. Do you want some tea? Yes, I would like some tea. Gosh. <laughs> oh, brother. Hi. I was so deeply moved by your kind and encouraging words. My incarceration has forced me to confront my sins. And every day I feel myself moving closer to a reconciliation with Christ. Surely your prayers are helping me get there. God bless you. As for your thoughts regarding Jenny Moran, I, too, am hurt and confused by the lies she has told about me. Scripture teaches us to hate the sin, not the sinner. But that's not always easy, is it? Perhaps by continuing to shun her, 
By showing her how lost we are without Christian fellowship, you are helping her find her way back to him. I'm certainly praying for her. And I hope you are too. He's saying that we didn't have an affair. That I'm lying. That's what he's saying. He's trying to discredit you publicly. That explains all the phone calls, all the nasty letters. Of course, they believe him. They don't believe me. They think I'm a liar. Look, it's a desperate move by Carol. We'll tear it apart in court. I don't think I can do it. I, I don't think I can face it. Get out. Why are we stopping here? Walk down the block. I'll meet you around the corner. I don't want to. Get out. Get out! What was that all about? You just walked down Main Street, Oldman, where you grew up, where you lived your whole life. Anybody yell at you, throw things, try to run you off the road? OK, Matt. I get it. Thanks. You know, there's Petmore and some of those people at your church who, out of some, I don't know, sick devotion to Carol, are trying to break you. But the rest of the world, it's over and done with. Why are you doing all this? I'm trying to help you. But why are you trying to help me, Matt? I mean, think about it. I left our home. I slept with another man. You shouldn't be trying to help me. You shouldn't be sitting here at the end of the block waiting for me. You should have just driven off and never looked back. Believe me, sometimes when I think about the things you did, that's exactly what I want to do. And sometimes I wish that you would. You being so nice, it can be much more painful than if you would just be honest. I am honest. No, you're not. You're acting like everything is just back the same, like everything is just back to normal. Everything can be the same if we want it to be. I don't want it to be. The problem with our marriage wasn't Steve and Matt. It was us. I don't believe that. I know that's the problem. What was wrong with us? I liked us. Matt, we were in a rut. We were just living separate lives together. I can't be the little girl that you married anymore, Matt. I can't. So you don't want my help? Oh, not like this. Any help that I need it has to come from inside me. Otherwise, it doesn't make any difference. All right. I'll get out of your way, then. me up to say vile things to me, or sends me hate mail, or sticks knives in my front door. But you do, and Stephen does. And I want you to give him a message for me. 
You tell him that he can spread all the lies about me that he wants. And you and everybody else in the church can choose to believe him. But he knows what the truth is. And I know. And God knows. And nothing that you or anybody else can do is going to stop me from telling it. May I help you? Reverend Bell? That's me. Hi. I'm Jenny Moran. Yes? I was the organist at True Transcendence Community Church. Oh, of course, yes. I understand you need a new organist. Well, that's right. Yes, we do. I'd like to apply for the job. Well, you would? Well, that's, that's wonderful. Um, Jenny, the thing is, uh... Oh, how shall I put this? At Oldham Methodist, we're, um... Well, we're... You're a nice, quiet little church, and the last thing that you need is bad publicity. Thanks for your time. No, no, no. You misunderstand. Oh, we are a quiet little church with a quiet little budget. There's no way we could offer you what you're used to. I'm not used to being paid anything at all right now. Oh, well, I think we can do a little better than that. I just... I want to play again. Then by all means, come and play for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you on Sunday. All right. Daniel! Daniel! Hi, Dad. That smells good. Wow. Oh, they're hungry. Hello there, guys. Going to bed? Yeah, soon. Yeah. I just want you to know I'm, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. Leaving? Yeah. I'm really grateful to you for helping me get back on my feet. But I'm going to be okay now. Nora lent me a little money and I found a job and found a really sweet little apartment over on Bay Street. Oh, yeah? Anyway, you've been on the couch long enough. Your back must be killing you. Yeah, a uh, bed would be nice. I'm gonna get a second job. I want to help out with the kids. I don't expect you to shoulder all the burden. And, of course, we'll work out a custody arrangement that works for both of us. I don't want you to go. What? You were right when you walked in on me. That was an impossible thing for me to understand then, but I understand now. I, I know that you we're leaving me, but I also know that I had been losing you for years because I never really listened to you. I never saw who you were. I, I was just going on how I do and, but I do see you now. I hear you. And I want you more than ever before. Man, this is so hard. What if it's too late for us?
I think that we both deserve a second chance. If we stay together, we can get through this. I'd arranged everything beforehand. The gun was in place. It was loaded. All that was necessary was to return from the convention and do it. But I didn't have a specific time in mind. And then I saw it. It, the rat. I was crossing the street near my hotel on my way back from the convention center and a rat ran in front of me along the gutter and suddenly it stopped and it stood up on its hind legs and it looked at me and I knew I had to kill Allison that night it was a sign. Well, Doctor? Well, you have an insanity defense, no question. And I will have no trouble testifying to that effect. You're not telling the truth, are you? Yes, I am. Okay. You threw yourself at Dr. Carroll, and he rejected you, and that's why you're turning on him now, isn't it? Come on, you gotta answer right away, or it's gonna look like you're lying. I'm trying to, Matt. You threw yourself at Dr. Carroll, and he rejected you, and that's why you're turning on him now, isn't it? Isn't it? Alexander can't do that. He can't badger me like that. The judge won't let him. Well, he's gonna try, and he's gonna land plenty of punches before anyone can stop him. Okay, well, I just, I need a break. You gotta answer right away, or it's gonna look like you're lying. I'm trying to, but you're just yelling at me. Well, that's what he's gonna do. Although the defendant's attorney will try to convince you otherwise, this is a very simple case. Stephen Carroll killed his wife in cold blood in the bedroom they shared while she slept unable to defend herself. He planned the murder carefully and he knew exactly what he was doing when he did it. And how do we know what he did? He told the police in chilling detail. Defendant's attorney will try to convince you that this was the act of a desperate, psychologically disturbed man who is therefore not responsible for his actions. We will prove that this is a lie. The murder of Alison Carroll was the act of a fully rational man with the oldest and most banal of motives. He fell in love with another woman. He wanted to be with her, and his wife was in the way.
Jenny? Jenny? about that when the time comes. Joe, I can't do it. I can't testify. Jenny. No. I can't. I'm sorry. No. She has to testify. She's not sure she can do that. The judge will issue a contempt citation. I think she'd rather face that than the TV cameras and Carol. But no one's disputing what happened to Alice and Carol. It's all about motive. Without Jenny's testimony, Carol could be a free man in five years. Jenny's our whole case. I need her here tomorrow. This is not negotiable. You have a visitor. Who is it? I don't know. Someone from your attorney's office. My attorney's office? I just wanted you to know that I'm going to be in that courtroom with my wife. And if your attack dogs do anything to hurt her, and I expect they will, when you get out of here, if you ever do get out of here, I'll be coming for you. Well, I wish you luck. Mr. Moran, I'm glad you're here. You saved me the expense of a process, sir. What's this? I'm calling you as a defense witness. Oh, I get it. If I'm a witness, then I can't attend the trial. In fact, to protect the interests of my client, I'm going to have to ask you to leave right now. It's OK. I hate wearing suits. Tell Carol that that god of his knows who he is, knows what he is, and every time he lies, it's written down in heaven. That's funny, Mr. Moran. I was led to believe you're not a religious man. I was at the conference all day. At about 6 o'clock, I went back to the hotel. I didn't go to dinner with my colleagues. I said I was exhausted and would join them in the morning. I went right to my room. I laid down for 20 minutes in my room to collect my thoughts, to prepare myself for what I had to do that night. I left my room at about 7.30 p.m., being careful to ensure that no one saw me. I took a I cab, took a to, cab the to the airport, where I boarded a 9 p.m. seaboard shuttle back home. After we landed, I drove directly to my house. I parked in my driveway where no one could see my car. I didn't check the time exactly, but it was around 11.30. Ellison was still awake when I came in. She was sitting by the fire writing Christmas cards. She was very surprised to see me. I told her the conference had adjourned early. We spoke briefly and went to bed around midnight. 
Allison took one of her sleeping pills and fell asleep right away. But I stayed awake, lying very still so as not to disturb her. As soon as I was certain she was asleep, around 1 a.m., I got up out of bed and walked out of our room. I retrieved the gun I'd hidden before I left for the conference. It was already loaded. I walked back into the bedroom, approaching Allison's side of the bed as quietly as I could, so as not to awaken her. I aimed for her head at close range. I wanted to put the bullet through her brain and kill her quickly. She was still after I shot her, but I wanted to make sure she was really dead and not suffering. So I checked her vital signs. I didn't find any, but just to make sure, I retrieved the tie I had hidden in my dresser drawer. I secured it tightly around her neck, and I strangled her. I scattered things around to make it look like a burglary, then drove back to the airport. On the way there, I disposed of the gun, tossing it into the river as I crossed a bridge. At the airport, I parked my car in lot number one near Meridian Airlines. From there, I took a taxi to the train station and an overnight train back to the conference. I arrived at the hotel at about 9.30 or 9.40 a.m. I went directly to my room. I washed and changed, grabbed a cab to the convention center. I sat through the morning meetings and at 11.55 a.m., I called my office in Harrison Cove. That's the sworn, written confession of Dr. Stephen Carroll. The psychiatrist testifying on behalf of the state today characterized Dr. Carroll as a pathological narcissist, that the clumsy trail that led directly to his arrest was not the work of a man wanting to be caught, but one so self-absorbed he never believed he would get caught. The trial resumes tomorrow with what will no doubt be its most gripping testimony, that of Jenny Moran, the church organist with whom Dr. Carroll... Whatever you decide to do tomorrow, I'll back you up all the way. I'm going to be there for you no matter what. Ms. Langston, since your scheduled witness has not appeared, I order you to move on to the next one. Five more minutes, Your Honor. No, we waited long enough. Uh, but Your Honor, this is... State calls Jenny Moran to the stand. When the defendant said he was going to leave his wife to be with you, did you believe him? Yes. Why did you believe him? Because we were in love. We wanted to be together. The defendant said that he loved you? Yes, many times. Did he ever talk about something 
happening to his wife, something that would enable the two of you to be together? Yes. When was that? About a, a month before he... before Mrs. Carroll was murdered. What did he say? He said, to the best of my memory, that... God willing, Allison's car would get in a crash or she would have an accident. God willing. Did he use those words? Yes. Dr. Caro talked about God a lot. Mrs. Moran completed her direct testimony this morning. And when court reconvenes after lunch, Mr. Alexander will have an opportunity to cross. You're doing fine. You don't let him rattle you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, excuse me. Okay. Jenny? Mom? Hi. I didn't know you were here. I'm sitting in the back. Is there room back there for me? <laughs> no. How are you? Oh, okay. You and Matt, you're together again. Yeah. We've made some real changes. Oh. That's good. Good. Why don't you come by for dinner, Mom? The kids would love to see you. I like that. Oh. Excuse me. The calling us back in. Oh, oh. good luck. Gotta Sorry. go. <laughs> okay. Shall we, Amanda? Oh, hi. Is it true, Mrs. Moran? that you sued your husband for divorce? Yes. On what ground? Spousal abuse. Is that true, Mrs. Moran? Did your husband abuse you? No. Excuse me? I didn't hear that. No. My husband didn't abuse me. You mean... You lied. Objection. Overruled. Answer the question. <clears throat> yes. Let me make sure I understand. When you stated in a legal document that your husband had abused you, you were not telling the truth. No. I see. So let me ask you this. When you testified earlier that you and the defendant were in love and that he was gonna leave his wife to be with you, were you lying then too? Objection, your honor. Overruled. When you want something, you lie, don't you, Mrs. Moran? No. You were in love with Dr. Carroll, weren't you? Were you in love with Dr. Carroll, Mrs. Moran? Yes, at the time, I thought I was. And when he didn't reciprocate that love, you decided to turn on him, didn't you? No, he did reciprocate. And so you lied. The same way you lied about your husband. No. It was Dr. Carroll who told me to lie about Matt in the first place. He told me that I would get a better settlement in the divorce if I accused my husband of abuse. So I did. Your Honor, move to strike the witness's last statement. And I'll regret Objection. it for the rest of my life. Your Honor, please. I have regretted it every moment since. Mrs. Moran. I'm not proud of the fact that Dr. Carroll was able to manipulate me like that. But he Mrs. did. Mrs. Moran, Don't answer the question. Let him manipulate you. Don't. Move to strike, Your Honor. Move to strike. Any hope 
Dr. Carroll's attorneys might harbor 